All right, hey again, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm Sam. Uh, I work on the Melium XMPP library, and I recently added support for ad hoc commands and data forms. And I wanted to give a quick demo of those. And then I thought we could kind of, if uh, there was any interest, we could turn it into a sort of round table afterwards and just kind of discuss the specs. Uh, or I can just talk about some of the issues I ran into. Um, this one, since it's so kind of last minute and small, we'll keep it you know, informal and casual and, uh, you know, feel free to interrupt if you want to ask questions. I'm not planning on doing this as a formal presentation since it's just a short demo. Uh, so let me share my screen again. And there we go. So uh, the ad hoc uh, commands package and the form stuff is all a separate sort of general purpose uh, you know, it's a library can be used by you, but I wrote up a little example um, that you can find in the under the Melium project in the examples uh, slash commands tree. Uh, so that's what we're going to run today. Um, the example uh, is pretty straightforward. I'll run through the code really quick, then we'll actually run it and see it in action. Um, it does some super jank, it's just an example, you know, parses a JID and the pass gets grabs a password out of environment variables, probably not something you want to do in the real world. We dial a session just like we would always do if we were using Melium, we can skip all this. Um, we start the session kind of server handler that responds and handles IQs. Uh, we don't actually have anything we need to respond to, but this also, um, this also is what keeps track of outgoing IQs and their responses, so we have to start that. Uh, eventually we can get rid of this code. For now it's here, but um, hopefully there's an open issue for fixing it so that this isn't always necessary. And finally, we use the actual commands package to, to actually do some stuff. So the commands package is what ha handles ad hoc commands. Uh, in this case, the kind of main entry point is fetch, which does exactly what it sounds like. When you call commands.fetch, it grabs a list of ad hoc commands uh, from the provided JID, which we parsed as the uh, first command line argument there and saved as their JID. Um, and then if uh, if there are other arguments, it takes those as a, uh, this example takes those as if they were a command to execute and executes them. If not, it just lists all the commands that are available. Uh, so let's, we're going to start with, we're going to skip this executing a command and just see listing really quick. Um, the actual code for listing is not interesting. It's pretty straightforward. We take that iterator we got back from fetch. We iterate over it and we do some printing to the console. So let's do that really quick. Uh, we use go run for, if you're not familiar, is just go for compile to a temporary directory, then execute. So anytime you see go run, you can translate that to you know, go build and run that actual uh, the commands binary we just spit out. But for now, uh, go run. And let's uh, let's see, what's the thing we can query? How about um, irc.chiogram.com? So this is the Chiograms instance of Bibomi, uh, the IRC bridge. And if we query, query it, we see we get a list of commands we can execute against it. So that's, that's all pretty straightforward. Um, and then just quickly before we dive into the executing the code, we'll see some basic ones. If we uh, wanted to execute one of these, we might specify it. Uh, so if we execute ping, we get back a pong. If we execute hello, uh, we display a form, which is how it uh, the data form that it sends back. And in this case, it's just asking for a name. Uh, It'll give us a list of actions. Uh, this is sort of, we don't necessarily need to display the actions every time if there's only one, in this case, complete. Uh, there would be really no point in canceling after a form, but for the demo, I just had it always show if it got actions back, um, display them, and we get the message back. Uh, so you noticed in the middle there, it kind of changed to a more uh, terminal user interface instead of the kind of CLI bit we've got for most of this. Uh, that's because a data form was sent back. So if we jump back into our code here, uh, what's happening, we're executing this execute command. Um, that goes through, we'll ignore the first bit, goes through each command, make sure that the one we, the thing we typed is actually part of the list and can be executed. Uh, if it's not, it spits out a, an error. And if it is, it calls this command uh, for each. Um, 
this is one of the things I don't love about commands. They uh, ad hoc commands can both send back an arbitrary number of payloads. Um, so when you say, you know, give me the command uh, register, that might just spit back one form, or it may spit back give you back a form and some out of band data and some other arbitrary payload you don't understand, or three forms. Uh, Maybe that the the spec is a little unclear about this. It sort of in some places suggests you can only have one of each type of thing, but I I don't think that's actually correct. I think that's just my reading of some of the confusing language. Uh, but anyway, you can get back a bunch of stuff, and then on top of that, you can also get back multiple stages. Um, so this for each is actually working on that second thing, the stages. So you send an IQ, you get back a form. You send an IQ submitting the form, you might get back another form that you have to execute, or, or rather a list of actions, and you have to hit complete, uh, execute the command again in a, uh, you get a little session identifier. Uh, so it's a little confusing. You sort of have two ways to get multiple forms, both within one single command, you can get a bunch of different payloads, and you can also get that indication that you have to also execute a follow-up uh, command in the same session. So for each does that follow-up command in the same session thing, and it just hands you a for every command it executes, it hands you the response, and that tells you if you need to execute more commands. And then the for each will go ahead and execute those and keep calling uh, this callback that we have in line here um, to handle those. So in our case, uh, once we're inside that specific um, form, we, we create an iterator over the sort of child XML, and we figure out all the things that are in the form that we can support. Uh, I'm kind of, I know I'm moving super quick over this code that if you're not really familiar with the code base is probably just a mess and confusing, but I promise we'll get back to a demo uh, shortly. Um, but the things we're iterating over are things like uh, notes, which is built into the ad hoc command spec. That's just a show me some text. Uh, the demo supports out of band URLs, which also just shows you the URL and invites you to click on it. Um, the uh, for, uh, data forms, which we will sort of skip over and uh, for now, and actions. Um, actions are also part of the ad hoc command spec. They're uh, just a list of previous, next, complete, or cancel that you can optionally do. These are weird because they're separate from forms. And the idea is that you can have actions after a, uh, for instance, if you show an out of band URL on the command line, you can then have the user click that, go sign up for something, then do the next next action, which would check that they signed up and maybe do some other part of the ad hoc flow. Uh, it's very confusing, though, because the spec, everything is ordered, as you'd expect. If you want to show an out-of-band URL, then a form, you put the out-of-band URL first in the XML, then the form. Um, but the, the, uh, the actions aren't ordered necessarily, or at least it doesn't mention whether they're ordered or not. So it may be that you get actions at the very beginning of the form, then an out-of-band URL, and you don't want to show the actions first. Uh, so it's a little bit confusing. You have to kind of defer the actions until the end. And we have a bunch of code in here that we'll ignore to kind of skip over that. Um, it's also a little weird because forms, of course, you don't necessarily want to show a form, then show the actions. You probably want the actions to be part of your data form. You want a next button and a previous button if you're displaying a like a wizard, for instance. Um, so you have to kind of parse the form, parse any other things that it sends as part of the payload, then hope you find actions in there somewhere that you can display. And then otherwise, I guess, make some up like you can always cancel and maybe you have a submit button or something on the form, even though there were technically no actions attached. Um, so the, the ad hoc spec is a little vague there and it's um, a little weird to use. Uh, but we'll skip all of, over all of that for a second. So ignore all the extra actions um, stuff. And we're just going to look at how we handle forms. Uh, so the handle forms function is what we call into when we see that we've gotten a data form in our payload. Um, we're using TView in this example, which is just a Go library for, uh, for terminal user interfaces to draw the forms. That was just a quick, easy way I could do a demo. Uh, so we set up, we look at if the form has instructions on it, and we draw, uh, we add those to a box. We go through each of the kind of field types. Uh, fixed is just a, a string of text. Uh, Boolean is like a 
a checkbox. Um, we can have fetch jibs, etc. And and for each of those, we add whatever the field is in our um, in T view in this case. So we we add that to our our view that we're about to draw. Uh, then for each of those, we have actually our own sort of um, our own form, uh, the, the actual data form from the form package. So that's our own our own XMPP specific form representation. Uh, that's passed in here as form data. And for each of those, we, we're iterating over each field, getting all of the things. And then when we set those, we set a callback to set a value on that variable in the form. So the way works more or less like forms in HTML do, which you might be familiar with, where we have some generic form that we've created. Uh, in this case, we've parsed one, then we can set values on it. And then at the very end, once we've done all the UI stuff, somewhere in here, uh, somewhere when we click the next button or submit button, whatever, whichever that might be, uh, we have a callback that does the act, takes that form data that we just set a bunch of values on and calls submit. And uh, submit just returns the effectively the XML that we would expect to send back for that form submission. Uh, so in our IQ response, we can uh, we can set that form submission and, and send it back. Uh, so let me go back to, Uh, here we go. So once we're done with handling our form, we get back the submission as our new payload. We append that to any other forms we've already submitted, and we somewhere at the end, we finish our iterating, handle any actions that have been unhandled. Oh, and we return from, where are we here? Sorry, my jumping all over the place. I know this is somewhat confusing. Um, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Anyway, some, somewhere in here we actually handle sending back the IQ. It doesn't. It doesn't really. The actual code doesn't matter so much. Um, so let's see. We're let's see a more complex example of those forms. Uh, let's do just so. Chiagram.com is at the um, an text messaging gateway, and they have a register uh, action, which has some actions, next and cancel, uh, asks for the gateway for sending text messages. If we, uh, you can see it's got some, some text up here. Uh, we've got a form that we can type into, and we can tab around and hit next and get another form. Uh, so the iteration works. This form is a little bit more complicated. We have a lot of instructions. We have various user IDs and tokens. Um, and we have the phone number, which I guess you all know my phone number now. That's OK. Please don't call me. And we can cancel or submit that. Um, so that's, oh, what do I want to do? Regis not register. <coughs> Excuse me. That's pretty much all I had. I just wanted to show off that you can have a sort of simple callback-based way to iterate over commands. We can print them, and then a simple way to iterate over various forms out of Ben data, whatever payloads we get, um, and uh, and be able to handle them. Um, anything like uh, in this example, anything sort of out of band or simple text is just written to the command line. Anything that requires a form is, of course, uh, goes into a more uh, TUI mode and draws the form. Uh, overall, this was all pretty straightforward to implement. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the the issues I ran into were really around a lot of old XCPs. For whatever reason, I run into more issues than some of the newer ones. I, I don't really know why that is, but they all seem to be around things where it, I don't think anyone thought about how they were going to be implemented. Um, so things like the actions uh, being poorly defined and sort of being separate from all of the other kind of payloads you could have. Uh, similarly, forms, there are sort of multiple types of forms. Um, there's like a multi-item form that's sort of more a table than a form. I don't really know why it's even called a form that it says are meant for search results. Um, but those, you can't actually tell the difference between the two until you've already kind of 
started parsing them. So it makes it difficult. You can't just like say, okay, here's the form and it's this type, hand it off to, uh, you know, a multi-item form parser versus an actual submittable form parser or to a specific type that's the multi-item form or how, however you would do that in your language of choice. Um, and there's also a kind of a lot of extraneous, uh, a lot of kind of extraneous stuff that overlaps between some of the older specs, like the action. Actions are something you probably want on your form, but also they're part of ad hoc, which makes sense because you can have any kind of payload. And after you've done displayed some information, you might still want to have those actions. Um, but also it doesn't tell you why they're, you know, what to do in case of the overlap. Um, and that's, that's really all I have. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any other things they would like to see rendered or drawn with this or has any questions or just wants to, you know, talk about or complain about issues they've run into with forms or, uh, or ad hoc, but uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was fun to implement. Um, and I enjoy, I really, I hadn't needed it until now. I don't especially like ad hoc commands or forms. Uh, but I started using Babomi recently and needed a way to configure it because uh, none of my clients supported it. So I wrote this little example uh, originally as a standalone tool. Now it's just an example on the library, but it uh, seems to work pretty well for just simple configuration. And that's all I've got. You can see I sent too many text messages, apparently. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, so implementation-wise, it seems like, to me, it seems like, uh, oh, I guess the question is, how much of this, how much of the implementation that you needed to do for the, for the, for the ad hoc forms here? Uh, overlaps with what you need to do for like in-band registration forms and things like that. Is there like overlap in the implementation that could be expressed in the XCPs themselves? Yeah, so both of those actually use, um, let me go back here, uh, data forms. And I do have a, I sort of see, I really had to only implement forms once. Um, the forms XCP, I think it's XCP4, I never remember. Uh, is the same between both. Uh, so it's not like we have to implement those separately. It is a generic forms implementation. You can get a form, parse it, iterate through fields. Uh, so that's all done by this, um, the form package. I can kind of show you, uh, let's see. So uh, actually, <coughs> excuse me, I've got something in my throat. Let me do this instead. Uh, Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, so so in the forms package, we have a, um, a type. Uh, this is sort of the documentation. Uh, it looks better on the web, but I don't want to <laughs> swap over. So sorry for this giant wall of text. Um, we have this type that's uh, data, and data just re represents any generic data form. We can, um, we can, when we create one, we can add a bunch of fields to it. Uh, we can iterate over those fields, uh, and then there's various, we can get, um, there's a sort of generic get function that takes an ID for a field and returns a type and whether it was actually set or not. Uh, interface is an awful goism for optional dynamic typing. Uh, so that I don't tend to like very much. That's just a thing that for now, at least, um, we have to do in Go. And then there's some more specific functions that, uh, return actual safe typed values. So if you know you have a checkbox, you can like call get rule on a form. Um, uh, so we do it anyway, we, this all to show, we do have a sort of generic form implementation where we can create forms, get back, uh, if get back submissions for them, set values on them, all that stuff. And that can be, it's used in this case, when we get an ad hoc command that contains a form, we call it, we create one of these forms and parse it if you were doing in-band registration or something and you got a form, it would be exactly the same. So no, it's not like you have to implement it per package or anything. There is this form package that has all kinds of field types and uh, all the same data types you'd use for both. 
But yeah, I hope that answered the question. I know I'm sort of rambling here. This was not a prepared presentation. Uh, that was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Zash notes in the chat. Um, uh, thing of note is that XCP4 forms only have input fields, which leads to why ad hoc has its own action things. Um, I didn't quite follow that. I don't know that that's true. The XCP4 forms do have buttons, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I thought they had a concept of a button, but I may be totally making that up. Not what I know of. I only know of it having input fields. And sort of do things that might be equivalent to buttons if you scope it and Somehow. Oh yeah, you're totally right. I just grepped over the for grepped over it, and there is literally no concept of a button. So I lied. <laughs> Zash is right. That's uh, that's why I guess ad hoc has its own separate actions. Um, it is still weird that they have to be separate. It means you can't. It's hard to have buttons on a form. You have to kind of jump through hoops and parse, perhaps parse a bunch of other stuff and figure out what the actions are and where they live. And um, maybe the solution is just ad hoc commands should have specified actions must always come first so that you can parse that. Or what do you do if you have multiple forms? You have a next action, but there are multiple forms in the same uh, in the same ad hoc command, because then you would you display next on both of them, and you've already clicked it on the first one? Does that mean you skip the second one, or do you show it? Um, it's, yeah, ad hoc commands, in my opinion, is a little poorly defined, and it's got some, some pretty severe ambiguities, so. Uh, but yeah, Zash is right. That's probably why they have actions. I was totally wrong. There are no buttons on forms. Also go through real quick, the actual commands, uh, I was kind of just showing the example application, but the actual commands package, um, also is pretty nice. Uh, so we have a representation of actions like we were just talking about. We can skip. I don't know why I did that as a bit mask. That's confusing and stupid, and I should probably change it. Um, let's see. Oh, and then we, so the main kind of thing of the commands package, uh, which is what I called it's ad hoc commands. I just called the package name commands because I don't really understand what it means by ad hoc. And uh, I didn't think anyone that was not already super familiar with XCPs would know what a package called ad hoc meant. Um, but you have a command type. Uh, it's got all of the sort of various sessions and nodes and things that you want to execute on it, uh, or things you need to execute a command. Um, we can call execute, which actually sends a command on the given session, uh, and that returns a response. Uh, we can execute IQ is the same thing. It just gives you more customization. Um, once we get a response, if I can scroll down to the uh, the response type here. Uh, the response gives us back, um, comes along with those payloads we talked about, and then gives us a way to call uh, various uh, methods like completion or next or various actions, the actions we can execute. So depending on what actions were present in the XML, we might call next on a response to generate the next command that we would then send back to the server. Um, or or we can just use the for each for each helper function that uh, that we saw in the example that just iterates over all the commands. And sorry again, I know this is not a great view of the documentation, and it's just kind of a blob of text. Um, but I guess I can swap back over to showing my browser instead. But uh, anyway, so we get the for each is just kind of a nice helper that does the whole process for you. But you could also just send a command, get back a response call next to get a new command, send that one, get back a response, and do it all yourself if you need more customization. Um, there's also a uh, fetch method, which is effectively a shortcut over. We already have like a disco, um, disco items, you know, fetch and iterate function in, in another part of the XMPP package. Uh, this sort of just goes ahead, and it it's just calling that under the hood. Uh, ad hoc commands are all stored in disco items. Uh, but it, but then it's translating the to a pack an iterator type kind of unique to this package that uh, that returns commands instead of that we can execute instead of just the disco item. 
uh, really they're, they're the same thing. It's all the same data. It's just a disco item. It's got uh, you know a node or whatever info on it. Um, we just have this as a convenience to go ahead and convert the disco items to things that this package understands that can be executed and sent as part of an IQ and whatnot. So most of this is pretty straightforward, just little shortcuts for all the things in the ad hoc commands package that lets you be as low level as you want or gives you some nice shortcuts like the for each that just goes ahead and handles all of the iteration and sending multiple IQs and all that for you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the commands package. Uh, let me see if anybody, oops. in case anybody missed the demo, uh, quickly do that again. How about, oh, I don't know, and run a, run another one and get an, another nice little form, which we can, you know, do things in. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's both packages. Um, I don't know, anything else anybody has? Or have, has anybody else run into issues with uh, data forms and ad hoc commands that made them, I don't know, confusing or hard to implement? I'd be curious what others' experiences are. It's interesting. I don't know why I hit cancel, and it definitely did not save the configuration. But uh, for some reason, jmp.chat sends back configuration saved either way. Oh, well, nothing we can do about that. Well, unless anyone else has any questions or anything they want to discuss about either XCP, I think uh, I think we'll call it. Yeah, it's just a short one. Uh, nothing especially interesting, I guess. But I, yeah, thanks, Ash. Um, yeah, I really liked the <laughs> the little TUI form look of TView. So at some point, I'm going to make a GTK demo as well. But I really uh, all of this was just I wanted a quick way to configure Bibomi because all the geogram stuff you can just kind of send messages to, but the BOMI requires support for forms and ad hoc commands, and I uh, didn't have any clients that supported them. OK, so we're resuming the recording. Uh, we set up Prosody really quick with a cool module. Zash pointed out it took no time at all, and everything was perfect, and we made no mistakes. Uh, but now we can get randomized forms, um, which are really neat. So we have JIDs. Uh, JIDs, this will crash because I have no error handling, but JIDs are validated. So when you got rid of the zero length local part, it panicked. Um, correctly validating the JID, that's just the demo needs better error handling. Um, and every time it'll give us fixed labels and cool things and we can submit. Um, this is part of the issue with the demo. If, if the actions are the first thing in the XML, it parses those, sees them, and sticks them in the form. If they're after the form, it doesn't know about them. So you get, even though we hit submit, you still have to like choose an action to do. Uh, so we can get another random thing with uh, some text and a password. And, uh, and we can go to previous to see it again, or go next and get more random stuff. And oh, this is really cool, Zesh. <laughs> um, so yeah, we get all sorts of cool cool things from Prosody, uh, like Booleans and stuff. And presumably, we always show the cancel action because that's available any single, like on all ad hoc multi-step forms, you can cancel at any time. Um, yeah. I really want it to give me more. What other fields are there? Oh, you know what? It probably won't because for JID, multi and stuff, I don't think I implemented them because TView didn't have like a multi. Or did it? Oh, no, I lied. It did. Cool. Oh. Or not. Well, that's a bug. Uh, but it's still going. It just printed. So I need to disable logging uh, when, the, when in TUI mode. That's another pro tip. So yeah, as you can tell, the example is not very polished. It's uh, <laughs> just some example code. So um, but yeah, it's got JID single and private. And I'm just going to keep hitting next forever and see what it gives me. 
But yeah, that's pretty cool. I wonder if we can stick the actions first and show the difference. How difficult is this going to be? Uh, that's what I wanted. Where do the actions multi step? That's going to be defined by mod ad hoc in Prosody itself. Ah, uh, OK. I should or probably not. Oh, I thought I saw mod ad hoc in here, but I guess not. OK, anyway, I should not try to like show how little of Lua I know by editing Prosody code on the fly. That will look poorly. But, uh, but yeah, we have cool multi-step command demo, thanks to Zash. So. Uh, everybody who was here for the actual demo and left uh, after we ended the recording, sorry you missed that all of our debugging and Zesha's cool demo. So I'm going to end that again. Recording over. Thanks, everybody.